Okay. So those are the scriptures that were given uh, to us. As soon as our sister comes in, we shall be able to, to revert back. But let me just uh, highlight. So just follow if, if maybe what you presented lines up with this. We had a group that had looked chapter 14, and I had very rich information from them in terms of submission. But just as a summary, um, Jesus here was teaching about when you want to start a business, what are some of the, the, the aspects that you need to look at? So he says you need to undertake a situation analysis, assess whether the project or business uh, with similar kind of approach exists, and also explore their basis for their success. And you can only do that if you are able to do a, a detailed situation analysis. Now, why was Jesus bringing this out? Remember yesterday I said that when Jesus faced the temptation of the devil, he was tempted in the area of livelihood, which includes enterprise. And uh, he was also tempted in the area of uh, laws. And we looked at the three dimensions of the law, the law of life, the law of light, and the law of lift. And uh, he was tempted uh, in the area of leadership as well. The devil says, I can give you all this if you bow down and worship me. So here now he's trying to bring back that lost dominion to us, that now if you want to undertake a business, and this is in Luke chapter 14, you must first sit down, establish what kind of business do you want to undertake? Do you have enough money to complete it? Now, if you don't have enough money to complete it, that does not mean then you don't start the project. All he's trying to bring to our mind is that if you don't have enough money to, to complete the project in one sitting, for example, see how best you can break down the project in terms of uh, uh, fragmenting it in such a way that you do it in a phased out format, but your project should still be pursued. So, you know, some people have read this scripture and they have said, you know, if you don't have enough money, then don't undertake a particular mission because according to Jesus, he says, you need to see if you have enough money. What Jesus is trying to say is, see if you have enough money, then analyze if this money is not enough, how best can I approach the same dream that God has given me so that I build on that? He says um, there is need for strategic thinking where you don't run before you think through the entire uh, enterprise scope. Cash flow projection, how much money do you have? Is it enough to undertake the project? You look at the risks, the hurdles that you are likely to face and how you can mitigate those hurdles. I think I heard from one of the groups mentioning monitoring uh, evaluating, which is very important in uh, project implementation. So that's the first part that Jesus talks about. The second part from verse 31, he gives a comparison of a king who wants to go to war with another king. And this, this comparison also relates to your business undertaking. You need to do a competitor analysis in business. Recognize that there are other business kings in your area or other areas near you, and acknowledge that they could be stronger than you. So Jesus is saying, if you want to go to war with another king, you have 10,000 troops, but he has 20,000, you need to assess your capacity to deal with the 20,000 troops, or else you need to engage that business king, that person who is ahead of you in business. How do you engage them so that maybe you can be a subcontractor, work with them to build your business? But even as you do that, you must be very careful not to lose your business focus. So don't just be that uh, passionate, zealous Christian who says, well, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. There are others who are header than your head. So you may be the head, but there are others who are ahead of you. So those could be header than your, your head. That is what Jesus is saying. So acknowledge that they could be stronger than you and try to work out a system where you can work with them but without losing your business focus. Then he further says networking or engage business kings responsibly and try to adjust to their terms. Okay, this is important in, in, in business development. But the, the next point is important. They are focused visioning. Maintain your vision even as you network with the business kings. In other words, don't, don't now sell off. Don't be a sellout. You know, where you sell off all your business ideas to these business kings. And I know uh, capitalists tend to have sometimes this mindset where they suffocate uh, small budding businesses. Maybe you want to start a peanut butter business 
and there uh, is a big peanut butter business and people start suddenly running towards your business because your peanut butter is uh, maybe better the cakes that you are baking are better so there's this big cake making business in your area and so they want to suffocate you or to choke you to death you know don't lose focus engage them adjust to their terms but remain focused as you network with the business schemes so we are saying beware of their plans to completely suffocate your business so those are the two dimensions that jesus highlights uh, in the gospel according to saint Luke. okay Pastor Amon, this is where I want people to unmute okay, and uh, just uh, give us the feedback. Uh, yes. I want to ask this question. The prodigal son, you know, he went out, <clears throat> the father had given him uh, the money and the wealth. Then he went out into a foreign country. I want the team to give me uh, genuine in feedback as you read the scripture. What kind of food did this prodigal son end up eating as a result of losing everything that he had? So let's hear some answers. Nangumbuzo, as you pen with a song again, you can see the most and last level. Yes, I would love one name, Miss Katsi, English Simole Begi. So Nasa now pen with a young no mercy, a parallel public chat, no mercy, and my kid, see Kulume, see Pimblinger, and you know what is the lesson there, and Jan. I am Pimbolo. This class is Pimblinger. I can either speak or push it in the chat. And Pastamoni, you can monitor the chat better. You've sent our chat that day. Okay. Is that uh, one delay? One delay, you don't have to respond. You, you are a training guru. I want oh, you to decide okay. what. I've to sent, I've sent, they, oh, you are sending are their response. response. Oh, okay. Hello, Shashani. Yes. Yes, yes, Babe. They didn't eat any food, but he he was willing to eat the food of the pig, but they didn't eat. Okay, but that's good. So there's an apology. He did not eat. Okay, maybe. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know we may have had different answers in different um, uh, groups. I can see that. But like the previous speaker said, the, the young man did not eat the food that belongs to the pigs. But when you go back to the preaching that we've had over the years, we've had big preachers preaching say, and he longed, he, he went ahead and started eating the food of the pigs. And then that preacher would be uh, telling lies in the pulpit. So it's always important when you are reading the Bible to read what the Lord Jesus Christ is presenting. So this young man longed to eat the food of the pigs, but nobody gave him anything. And he started getting hungry. He says, how many of my father's hired servants have got food enough to eat and even to, to, to spare? And yet I am dying of hunger here. So please go and revisit that. In case you answered he ate the pig's food, at least now we know. He just longed to eat that food, but nobody gave him even the food that belonged to the pigs. And that is very, very important. So maybe I'm sure by now our sister could be in, but let me just highlight something on the, on the fourth thing that the father did when the prodigal son returned. When you read Matthew, I mean Luke chapter 14, Luke chapter 14 is giving us concepts of how to start a business. Luke chapter 15 
is a teaching on foreign direct investment, how you can use money to go and invest in a foreign land. Now, foreign direct investment is not just about you coming from Eswatini to come to invest in Zambia. When the Bible talks about a country, it is not a country the way we know it. It could be from one region to another within the same country. So this guy became like a, what we call today FDI, foreign direct investor. He went and invested. Now, take note, when the father shared the, the property or the wealth between them, he even gave the son who remained. The Bible doesn't even record what that boy who remained at home did with the money. Some people argue, you know, he could have been using it within the father's estate. That is not true because the father gave him also his wealth, but he still remained participating in the father's wealth. So this guy really took a, a risk, and I guess the, the group may have come up with the idea to say he was a risk taker. He took a risk, went to a far country, invested, and he gained wealth. Because the Bible says he squandered his wealth, meaning he accumulated wealth during the time that he was in the foreign country, but he just misappropriated his wealth. And then when he went into voluntary liquidation, meaning his wealth had fizzled, he couldn't maintain his company anymore, he went back to the father. And this is what the father says. Number one, bring the best robe and put it on him. The last time we checked, we saw the robe. It was the coat of many colors that was given to, to Joseph. The robe represents restore the dignity that my son had lost. He still deserves to be dignified, to be respected. Number two, put sandals on his feet. What is God saying? Even when you do the business and you, you find some hitches on the way, you don't need to give up. Just get back to where you started from and start walking towards your destiny again. So the sandals signify the movement towards your destiny on the pathway that God has already paved for you. Number three, put a ring on his finger. What was this ring? It was called the signet ring, which had the signature of the father. So if he went to a supermarket, he could buy anything that he wanted. And using the father's signet ring, he would place a stamp on the invoice, and then they charged everything to his father's account. So the signet ring was the first model of what we call today the automated teller machine card, the ATM card. That card that you go, you push in the, the ATM machine, and then money comes out. So in the olden days, they would put a signet ring, and then if they look at the signature that is on that ring, then they would charge your father's account everything that you purchased. What does that imply? You can still have unlimited access to your Heavenly Father's account. So while you are thinking through the business, which businesses can I undertake? God is saying you can use that signet ring. That is the, the passage towards my wealth, my unlimited wealth. The last thing that we see there is kill the fattened calf. Now, these are calves that were specifically fattened so that if the king visited you, if you were a rich person, a well-known person in the area, maybe the king get, paid you a visit or someone who is a dignified person paid you a visit. To honor their visit, you wanted to kill this special calf that was fattened, which had no blemish. It had the best of the, the meat parts within its body. And then you gave this kind of uh, uh, food to the dignitary who had come to visit you. What is the father saying? Let's restore that ultimate dignity, the same respect that we can accord to the king. Remember, Jesus is the king of kings and is the Lord of lords. So he's saying, you are a landlord or a lord in your own realm. I am restoring you back to the lost dominion mandate, which you lost because you felt like you, had, you, had, you were done. There is nothing else that you could do. And so that is, those are the four pillars or the four aspects that the prodigal son story teaches us. That you can start a business, you can face hurdles on the way, but you don't need to give up. You can still go back to where you ended or where you, you failed. Now, you see, this is chapter 15. Then chapter 16 is what we read yesterday where we, talk about, uh, uh, we talked about employment, enterprise, and empowerment. So there Jesus is talking about the fact that you have a business, now you can start getting employees into your business who, when they are employed, they should be empowered enough to, to run their own enterprise also, and then they can run to the bank, maybe get other bank loans to, to still build or grow their businesses. So these are the four aspects that I wanted to share before we get to listen to the stories of Eswatini.